Hello everyone, this is Noah, and before we get started, I wanted to give a shout out to my friend Steven. Steven is a fellow Shorn Khan Karate practitioner, and he is also a web designer. Recently, he developed a new company called Market Muscles, which is aimed at martial artists who run schools of their own to uh, help them develop a website and really build a strong web presence. He has been generous enough to uh, give me and my viewers a uh, special discount code. So uh, if any martial arts instructors with a uh, school are watching my videos and have an interest in uh, maybe revamping their website or getting a website uh, brand new, uh, you can actually go to the Market Muscles site and use discount code NOAA to get 20% off your first month. Today I'd like to discuss the idea of using examples of other martial arts to illustrate techniques found in karate. Now this is something that I actually recently wrote about on my website and uh, elaborated on it fairly extensively, but it's something that I wanted to address in video form as well. Fairly often I will share content that is uh, an animated uh, image or a still photo or a video of some sort of technique being utilized in mixed martial arts or in judo competition or in sumo competition uh, or salat, any number of different martial arts that are not karate. And when I do this, I will usually point out the connections between what's being done in the example and the techniques that can be found in karate. Now, that may be an overall principle that's found in karate, and it may be a specific application to a kata. Inevitably, when I share these types of technique examples, there will be people who typically don't practice karate uh, that will point out that because the people in the example don't practice karate and they didn't learn the technique from karate, then that example is not karate. Now, that's something that I can understand their point of view, but I don't think that it's really a very good way to look at things. If you think about it, martial arts are all going to have a lot of crossover, just by virtue of the fact that the human body is mostly the same uh, in function, no matter where you go in the world. And fighting is going to be very much the same no matter where you go in the world. There are going to be physical ailments and disabilities and specific physical traits that are different from place to place, but even with that, the body is still mostly the same. And when you look at martial arts, there's going to be different contexts and different rule sets, different goals, but by and large you're going to encounter a lot of the same methodologies between different martial arts just because of the way that the human body and physical conflict work. Now, I like to point this out when looking at a variety of martial arts. I feel that looking at the similarities between different systems really helps bring people together and, and kind of see how things are interconnected. Additionally, just because the people in the examples don't practice karate and didn't get the techniques from karate doesn't mean that those techniques and methodologies don't exist within karate. And the only real argument that people can have for that is that, oh well, I've never seen karateka practicing that. Now, that is a generalization that unfortunately is somewhat fair in a lot of instances. Karate has a reputation for being uh, nothing but the long distance point fighting, uh, you know, non-contact sparring, uh, very little understanding of grappling methods, joint locks, takedowns, things of that nature. So when you see a karateka saying that, oh, this technique that involves grabbing and hitting uh, or taking someone down, that this technique is karate, it can be hard for some to make that association because that's not what they think of when they think of karate. But I do believe that this is something that we can overcome. Right now, I believe we're starting to see a real karate renaissance. Uh, that is a return to the older methods uh, in this case. The 
modern approach to karate doesn't have the best reputation. But if we look at the karate of uh, the 1800s, even the early 1900s, we see examples of karateka who uh, really branch out trying to develop a very solid skill set in fighting and being willing to put themselves to the test. Uh, Morobu Choki is a great example of this with not only his fights uh, in the Tsuji district but also uh, going to Japan and fighting a western boxer. These types of things used to occur and Karatega used to engage in kakadameshi uh, challenge matches on a fairly regular basis as well. And these would have been full contact matches uh, at very close range where the practitioners are trying to strike each other, uh, choke each other, attack the joints, take each other down. It's very much like mixed martial arts. It's just within a more uh, confined uh, range of combat. But I feel like if we return to this type of training, it will be easier for people to look at karate and see that, yes, these techniques that they normally associate with Muay Thai and boxing and MMA and sumo, that these techniques are also present within karate. And it's not just being practiced in the form of solo kata, but that it also gets practiced uh, against a resistant partner in kakadameshi style training. If we start to promote this type of training and promote the real uh, practical old style methods of karate, then it will be easier for people to see these types of connections. And in my opinion, that's good for the overall martial arts community. Thanks for watching everyone and be sure to like and subscribe and check out my website karateobsession.com for more content. Also be sure to check out Market Muscles and sign up with coupon code NOAH to get 20% off your first month.